Hello. In the last video, we talked about how to build your e-consent form into REDCap as a question. So uploading images of our consent form so that we could then eventually send these out to our study participants to consent them. This, in this video, we're going to talk about using surveys so that we can actually take this consent form and email it out or post it online for individuals to be consented. So the first step is we're going to go up here at the top of this project setup, which is kind of the main landing page for REDCap, and click on Enable next to Use Surveys in this project. So this is the same as in any study where we want to have surveys. So I'm going to scroll down just a little bit now that surveys are enabled and click on Online Designer. So here, normally, we, if we had several forms that we wanted as surveys to be emailed out or sent out publicly, we would need to enable them here. We only have the one consent form, so I'm going to click on Enable. So I'm going to scroll down. Uh, here we just have information that we might provide for our users. Under normal circumstances, for say a regular questionnaire, we might want more descriptive information about sec or how secure their information is, the purpose of collecting the information. But for right now, I'm going to kind of skip over most of these survey features and really just go to the ones that are relevant to the e-consent process. So the first one I'll note is this question display format. We do have this option, we could have everything displayed in one long page, or we could choose to have one section per page. So you may recall in the last video, I put section headers, begin new section, between each of the images of my consent form. And the reason I did that was so that each image would load as a page that they would then hit next to get to the next page, giving a little bit more space to read the actual content of that since we do want our uh, users to be able to see that information. So we may choose to display page numbers at the top. I would not recommend hiding the previous page since we do in fact want them to be able to uh, you know, go back and review if they miss something. I'm gonna go ahead and change this to enable users to download a set of their responses so that the user can have a copy of their filled out consent form. As well as I'm gonna choose a survey specific field so we could have things sent to the email field. Uh, we do want to leave the required fields with stars. Don't necessarily want people to see aggregates of how many people were consented. I'm going to skip over the response limits. We could opt to let people save and return later. It's kind of up to you for your project. As well as what we want to have happen here. If there's an other surveys that you want them to go on to, if you want them to continue a website to a website, or if you want just a message. But now at the bottom, we have this feature for the uh, disabled currently eConsent Framework and PDF Auto Archiver. Let's go ahead and click on this. So if you forget what I'm saying here, granted this is a video, but if you want more information, you can open this up and it spells things out. And I do really want to underscore, I mentioned it in the first video, that everything we're saying here is about how technically you may be capable of enabling eConsent Framework, uh, but it is not to say that the IRB necessarily approves it in all cases. Different studies will have different uh, requirements and different considerations. So it's always very important to make sure you talk to your uh, IRB members to make sure that they are on board and that you have IRB approval to work with the e-consent framework and use REDCap in this way. Uh, they even go as far as to explain that it's a framework because it's a general process, but it's not meant to be uh, viewed as the, you know, inherently open to anybody if regardless of the IRB. So I'll go ahead and hit close. And I'm going to say auto archi archiver and e-consent framework. So we can give this a version. This is version one today. I'm going to leave it not editable by users. I just want my study uh, individuals to be able to participate. So we want to say there's a first name field. So you may recall we set a, a required field as first name and a last name field. So we can just go in and directly access those. Uh, for this, we I'm not so interested in having a date of birth. Your study may, so you might put that in there. And then going down, if there's a signature field, and we go in and we can say it is the please sign here signature field. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and change this from send confirmation email from no to yes. And we can go in and provide a message. So uh, we could say 
uh, something that won't be so revealing in the subject. I'm sort of blanking on an appropriate one. We don't want to necessarily say in case it's a, say, a shared email account, you know, here is your potentially very sensitive uh, medical condition study consent form. So something that's going to be aware of those sort of limitations. But we could say for today's purposes, I will just call it consent form. But you may want to, depending on the type of study, be slightly more, uh, you know, subtle or discreet as the case may be. I'm also just going to show out how piping works. So you may recall, I forget exactly what we called it. We called it first underscore name. So we're going to remember that that is the name of our first name field. And if we put that in square brackets, exactly as it appears from the variable name, uh, here is a copy of your consent form. Uh, you know, please contact us and so on. I'll go ahead and say include. You may have IRB requirements, particularly because there is PHI in this, and email is not a secure form of communication. So you might not have permission to do this, depending on the nature of your study. But just for the sake of illustrating, perhaps we'll also have a, an attachment there. If I click on preview, it's going to say, hi, piped data. And so that says piped data in the preview. But if I fill it out, it would actually have my, in my name or the name of an individual. So it says they were saved. If I wanted to go back and change that, we could go to survey settings here. So now just to see if this has worked, we could click on survey distribution tools. I'm gonna to click on open public survey. We could also create a participant list over here and email it to people that we have if we have a large list of individuals. But if I open that up, we have the image. See, so because we set those uh, new sections between, it's asking us to go to the new page, page two. Next page. So it's a little bit more readable. Page four. And so if we say no, it should just say thank you. If we say yes, we could also download this here. Sort of downloads that to my computer. And so we could say, draw this in. Save. That's my first name, last name. Uh, and so on. Just add the date. I'll put in my Langone email. And if I go to next page, we get the information from the consent form. Please review the options at the bottom. It takes a second to load, uh, but it does have the information that we just viewed as a, as a sort of reviewable piece of information. And it does say here, I certify that all the information is correct uh, and it counts as equivalent to signing a physical document submit. And if I was to go to my email, I should either have already or shortly received an email letting me know that, uh, uh, you know, that I have participated in this with a copy of this for my own purposes. There's also a download here that I set for the, because I enabled that in the survey settings. Uh, so those are the steps for enabling e-consent. Uh, definitely feel free to reach out to me. You can either email me directly, my email on the previous screen, is fred.lap, as in Peter, O-L-L-A, -L -L -A, at nyulangone.org. Or if you don't want to remember all of that, you can go to hsl.dataservices at nyulangone.org. Or for that matter, if you just go to the library's homepage, hsl.med.nyu.edu, and use the email function that appears on the right of the screen. Pull that up just for the sake of argument. Uh, you could definitely send a message uh, here, email us. It will probably get to me or at least to one of my colleagues. We're happy to try to answer questions about use of REDCap, including e-consent, uh, as well as you always are also able to contact Rick Church, the REDCap admin, over here through this uh, blue button. So thank you for your time today, and these have been the steps for enabling e-consent.